Hi, Dr. Charles Chabert, urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic here on the Gold Coast. The following video is here to provide some information prior to proceeding on with a robotic-assisted radical prostatectomy. Uh, so a radical prostatectomy is a surgical treatment for the management of localized prostate cancer. The aim of the procedure is to completely remove the entire prostate together with the seminal vesicles. These structures are part of the male reproductive system. Their role under normal circumstances is to produce fluid that is seen when a man ejaculates. So following this surgery, um, if a man experiences an orgasm following this surgery, it is completely dry. There is no emission of uh, fluid. So prior to proceeding on with surgery, obviously a, a lengthy discussion would have uh, been undertaken between myself and the patient to explain uh, and to discuss the various treatment options that are available for men to manage their localized disease. And there are several different choices. Uh, if uh, a man selects uh, surgery, it would be performed in my practice here at uh, Pindara Private Hospital. The majority of men are admitted overnight and 90% of individuals go home the next day. Prior to surgery, there are a series of assessments that are performed to ensure that a man is fit and well to proceed on with the surgery. As part of that process, uh, a review at the pre-admission clinic is undertaken whereby various blood work will be performed, a urine test and a tracing of a man's heart. Every man in my practice before having a radical prostatectomy has what's called a stress echo, which is in essence an ultrasound that is performed to assess heart function and make sure that a man has a healthy heart. The reason we do this is because the same age group of individual that is prone to developing prostate cancer is also prone to developing cardiovascular disease or basically um, hardening of the arteries inside the heart. So that is uh, or includes uh, some of the assessment that's performed before we get to surgery. Uh, on the day of surgery, men are admitted into the hospital first thing in the morning. Um, they will come through to the uh, pre-admission area, they will be given a pre-med and the majority of men that undergo a radical prostatectomy are treated with a combination of both a spinal anaesthetic as well as a general anaesthetic. What this means is that a very small injection is placed into the lower part of the back and this makes um, uh, a man numb from the waist down. This has the added advantage of keeping men very comfortable when, when they wake up from their anaesthetic. The unusual part of this is that your legs in essence go to sleep and it can feel a little bit funny when you wake up that you have no feeling, no sensation of your toes or of your legs. So the spinal anaesthetic is given first and then men come through to the operating room where they then undergo a general anaesthetic and are completely asleep obviously during their procedure. The robotic approach is performed through six small incisions inside the tummy. The tummy is inflated with gas to enable us to see what we are doing and the prostate together with the seminal vesicles are removed. Depending on an individual's disease profile, i.e. his PSA, how the prostate feels, uh, and also the Gleason score, or what's called the ISOP grading group, these characteristics give us an idea of the likelihood of an individual's cancer being contained within the prostate or having breached through the shell. It will be on the basis of these criteria and also discussions that I have with patients that will determine how we go about approaching nerve sparing. Nerve sparing really refers to our ability to preserve the nerves that supply a man's penis and are integral in the process of developing an erection. If we preserve those nerves and men have normal erections before we start, are less than 65 years of age, do not have diabetes and don't have high blood pressure, there is a reasonably high chance that there will be recovery of sexual function. If these criteria are not met, then even with nerve sparing surgery, the likelihood of recovery of erectile function begins to decline. 
that discussion about whether or not we spare nerves will have been uh, undertaken before we get to the surgical uh, phase of a man's treatment. Surgery usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half to do, assuming we do not remove the lymph nodes from the pelvis. There are certain criteria that guide us to removing lymph nodes from a pelvis that can include either a positive PSMA scan, which is the, uh, the scan that is done uh, to assess the location of disease before we proceed on, or alternatively, if we have a young man with more aggressive features. After surgery, a man will have a catheter in place, so the tube that goes through the penis into the bladder, and there will also be another smaller tube that comes out of the side of the tummy on the left-hand side. That tube is usually removed at six o'clock the next day. Uh, after surgery, a leg bag is applied onto the catheter, and we encourage men to drink plenty of fluid and to get up and walk. The expectation is that a man will walk 500 meters on the first day after surgery, and will then walk a minimum of a K every day until we do the cystogram at day seven. Uh, a cystogram is a dye test whereby we inject dye through the catheter and we assess the integrity of the join that we've created between the bladder and the urethra. We're basically making sure that the bladder and the pipe have knitted together and that there is no uh, leakage at that point. And for just about every man, it's sealed and healed at that time. As long as we have that confirmation, we then take the catheter out. We get men to pee and empty their bladder, and as long as they do so, they're then discharged from the ward at that time. So for most men, it's an overnight stay at the time of their surgery. They're discharged after that period, and then they represent to hospital, usually on day seven, to have the catheter removal. It's really important once the catheter comes out for men to be very diligent with their pelvic floor exercises so that they can regain full urinary, urinary continence as soon as possible. For those men where sexual function recovery uh, is desired, we then start Viagra if there are no contraindications or another one of the phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors of which there are three main uh, products available commercially. They include Viagra, Cialis and Levitra. There are generic uh, options available also. These drugs are then started at that time and it is possible that these drugs may have been used prior to surgery um, in select circumstances. Uh, I would normally give men a call or touch base with men in that first week to detail the results of the pathology and from an oncological or a cancer monitoring perspective uh, I touch men, base with men at about the eight week mark following surgery at which point we do a blood test before that review to ensure that the blood test or the PSA is zero. That gives us confirmation that from a, uh, from a cancer perspective everything is uh, suitable and appropriate for us to go into a monitoring phase where we then monitor the PSA in that first year, three monthly. If you have any other questions, if you are awaiting a radical prostatectomy, leave them in the comments section below, or if you are awaiting surgery with me and something is not clear, please don't hesitate to contact the office and leave the question with the staff. Hope this helps.